hello everyone welcome back to spectrum classes in this video i am going to discuss how to draw the molecular orbital diagram for boron carbon and nitrogen diatomic molecule in my previous video i have discussed how to draw the molecular orbital diagrams for hydrogen helium lithium and beryllium molecule now you may have a question what is the difference between these two so actually the difference is that these all are S block elements and only S orbitals are involved in the formation of the molecular orbital diagram for these four elements which I have discussed in my previous video. And here I am going to discuss these three molecules in which P orbital is also involved in the formation of their molecular orbital diagrams. So here I have shown you just for the, a brief summary of my previous lecture I have discussed their linear combination of atomic orbitals and here I have shown the molecular orbital diagram for helium atom and how the electrons are filled in that and how by the combination of these two S orbitals this sigma bonding molecular orbital and sigma anti-bonding molecular orbitals are formed. So I am just showing you the small animation. When these two are in constructive interference, then sigma bonding molecular orbitals are formed which is having low energy as compared to the atomic orbitals and this is and when these s orbitals are in destructive interference then they are forming the sigma star anti-bonding molecular orbitals which is having slightly higher energy than the corresponding atomic orbit. These are the bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. This I have discussed in detail with the help of linear combination of atomic orbitals in my previous video. If you have not checked that, so I would like to suggest you, you first go and check that video and then you will better understand this video, right? We have also discussed there the electronic configuration for molecular orbitals, bond order and their magnetic properties in detail. These three points we are also going to consider here for boron, carbon and nitrogen. Molecule. So let's start with this video in which p orbitals are involved. So here we are having the p orbital and this p orbital is comprised of px, py and pz orbital. So this Px is represented by this, Py is represented by this and Pz is represented by this shape. As we are having three axes, X, Y and G, you can also interchange the positions but I have taken like this. So here this is X axis, this Px is like this, Py is like this and Pz is like this. So we are having these three orbitals here of one atom. Similarly, for the second atom, we are having the same set of p orbitals. These six atomic orbitals will combine together to form 3 plus 3. These three and these three are total six. And this six atomic orbitals combine together to form six molecular orbitals. One is pi, pi and then sigma. And then we are having pi star, pi star and sigma star. Right, so these are the six of molecular orbital. Out of these six, three are bonding and three are anti-bonding molecular orbital. These are bonding molecular orbital and these are anti-bonding molecular orbital. I will explain all these points in detail, right? So first we will consider how the orbitals overlap, how this Px and Px atomic orbitals of two different atoms overlap and form new molecular orbitals right so let's start here suppose px orbital of one atom this and px orbital of another atom and now these two atomic orbitals these are atomic orbitals actually atomic orbitals and these atomic orbitals when and suppose this is our internuclear axis and these atomic orbitals when are in same phase means these green are on the same side in some text these are colored and in some text these are shown by the plus minus right so this empty part is say minus and this is plus this is plus this is minus when plus plus or when these are in same phase they will form the 
bonding molecular orbital in this manner so these two green overlap together and they form about the, this is the nucleus one nucleus two of this atom and this is the bonding molecular orbital and this is represented by sigma molecular orbital right similarly if we are having these two atomic orbitals in opposite phase this is plus a this is minus or this is green and this is empty right when these are in opposite phase then we are having a destructive interference and they are in this case repulsive in nature and when these two are in the repulsive in nature and here are the internuclear axis and these are the nuclear then they repel each other and they form high energy sigma star molecular orbital this is our molecular orbital and this is also known as anti-bonding molecular orbital and this is known as bonding molecular orbital right so by the combination of px px we get sigma and sigma star orbital so two atomic orbitals combine to form two molecular orbitals and this will be represented like this so in the pictorial form of molecular orbital diagram we will represent it like this so px px will form sigma orbital and sigma star orbital now coming to the py say py is in this manner and this is the internuclear axis so this is of one atom this is of one atom and this is of another atom right and these are atomic orbital p atomic orbitals when these are in same phase here these are in same phase so plus plus or dark dark side is on one side and this white side is one side right so these are in constructive interference and they form a pi bond because sidewise overlapping is possible in that case as previous sidewise overlapping is there and because of that sidewise overlapping they form pi molecular orbital so this is designated as pi molecular orbital now coming to the next and if these two are in opposite phase one plus and one minus or colored and white so these are in opposite phase if these two are in opposite phase then there is a repulsion and if there is a repulsion then in that case we are having this is anti-bonding pi star molecular orbitals right so in that way two atomic orbitals combine together to form two molecular orbitals so this will be shown while we are drawing the molecular orbital diagram this will be shown like this so py py on combination where they form pi or molecular orbital and pi star molecular orbital now we are going to discuss pz atomic orbitals and here we have taken these red pz atomic orbitals which is designated as pz right so when these two are in constructive interference then they form pi molecular orbital and if these two are in destructive interference or in opposite phases then they form a pi star molecular orbital and this pi and pi star molecular orbital formation is designated as in the molecular orbital diagrams like this so here we are having pz pz atomic orbitals and on the combining these two we are having pi orbital and pi star molecular orbital but as you have seen here pz and py both are form pi molecular orbital so we are having we cannot distinguish which one is py which one is pz we get all together py pz and py pz as pi orbitals and this is pi star orbitals right so four atomic orbitals here you can see this here this is one two three and four atomic orbitals combined together to, to form one two three and four atomic orbitals but you may now have a question what about the px orbital yes you are right so px will be there only right 
but that px will not form pi orbital that will form p sig sigma orbital right so this is forming sigma orbital so this is sigma this is sigma star i will explain this in the next slide right so sigma sigma star these two atomic orbitals will be formed by the combination of px and px right and py py will form pi orbital so in this way we are getting sigma pi pi then sigma one more thing which i bring to your notice this sigma and pi will change their positions sometimes this sigma is in low energy and this pi is of high energy but in some cases we are having pi orbitals are of low energy than the sigma orbital so only change you will find here that i will explain in my next slide right so i hope you understand how these p atomic orbitals combine together to form six new mo molecular orbitals right so now i will take the example here i have shown this molecular orbital diagram for boron molecule right so this is one boron molecule and this is another boron molecule so what i told you in my previous video first of all you have to write down the electronic configuration for the boron atom so you have written 1s2 2s2 2p1 so here you are writing your atomic orbitals in the increasing order of energy so here 1s2 2s2 this is 2p1 okay Similarly, for the second boron atom, you are writing 1s2, 2s2, this is 2, and this is 2p1, right? So, this is how you have written your atomic orbitals in the increasing order of energy. Now, the next point is that you are seeing this highlighted molecular orbit. When the number of electrons are less than or equal to 14, we are having pi orbitals are of low energy and then the sigma orbital right in case of energy if we are considering the energy then pi orbitals are of low energy then the sigma orbital so we will first draw the pi orbitals and then we will draw the sigma orbital however in case of anti-bonding molecular orbital they will always follow the same set of orbitals first pi and then sigma star right only the changes in the highlighted orbital now here is a trick how to memorize this pi orbitals will be of low energy so here the value of pi is 22 upon 7 and since by the combination or by the overlapping of pi orbital p orbitals we are having two pi orbitals up to the number of electrons 14 we are having this pi orbital at low energy side or in the denominator in the denominator we are having it is downside right so for up to 14 or less than 14 we are having this pi orbital at low energy side so this is the only change which we will find after this 14 number so if i ask you how many electrons are there so you just have five electrons in one boron plus five electrons in another boron so 10 electrons are there so we are in less than 14 electrons so that is why we are having our pi orbitals of low energy right getting my point you may have a question from where these s orbitals so these s orbitals are like as we discussed in our previous video so 1s 2s will combine together to form sigma orbitals right and sigma star orbital now we are filling these electrons in the molecular orbital so first i will collect all the electrons together so as i told you earlier we are having 10 electrons you can see four electrons four electrons and two electrons total 10 electrons how we are going to fill these electrons so i will first elaborate it as electron numbers so electron 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 then 9 and then 10 this is important actually so here because these two are of same energy so here we are following the Hun's rule of maximum multiplicity 
therefore first we fill electron number 9 in first block and then we are filling the electron number 10 in the second block right so this is important you do not fill both the electrons together in one orbital right now we are filling the electrons and according to the Pauli's exclusion principle and then Moon's rule of maximum multiplicity. Now we are writing the electronic configuration. So here you can see first we are going to write down the sigma 1s because it is formed by the combination of 1s orbital. So sigma 1s and it is having two electrons. Now place the comma and then sigma star which is formed by the combination of 1s atomic orbitals. So sigma star and how many electrons are there? So two electrons are there. Now we are writing sigma 2s and it is having again two electrons. Sigma 2s electrons are there. Sigma 2s star two electrons. Now coming to this. How we are going to write this? So this is our pi orbital and it is formed by the combination of pi py right 2 py and this is formed by pi 2 p g and these two are in equal energy so we are placing the equal sign rather placing the comma so how it is written so it is written like this pi 2 py is equal to pi 2 p z and how many electrons are there one electron each so this is how we are writing the electronic configuration. I hope you understand. Now coming to the calculation of bond order. So bond order is 1 by 2 number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital minus antibonding molecular orbital. So as I told you earlier, low energy atomic orbitals are bonding molecular orbitals. So how many electrons are there? 6 electrons are there in these. Right? So, I am just writing bond order is equal to 1 by 2, 6 minus 4. 4 electrons are in antibonding molecular orbital circled by this red color, right? So, the bond order is 1. So, B2 molecule exists and it is having one bond in between, right? Now, coming to the C2 molecule. So, in the same way, we will draw first the electronic configuration for this carbon. So, how many electrons are there in one carbon? So, 6 electrons are there. So, 2 electrons are having 12 electrons, which is less than 14. So, if it is less than 14, then we are having pi down. So, pi is down and then sigma, right? I have drawn. Now, we are filling the electrons. Total 12 electrons are there. Electron number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, this is how we are going to fill. Not 9, 10 together, 11, 12 together, no. We will fill 9, then 10, then 11, then 12, right? So, this is important. Now, we are filling the electrons here. So, you can see. Now, writing the electronic configuration. So, as I have written earlier, so only two, two electrons I have to put here. Rest is same as I did in my previous slide. Now coming to the bond order calculation. So bond order is number of electrons in the bonding molecular orbital. So how many electrons are there? Total 8 electrons are there. So we are putting 8 minus 4. So carbon molecule will exist as C double bond C. 